Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, y'all. Hey, it's your girl. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up? How y'all doing? Y'all know what time it is. It's Real Talk Diva and Devo time. It's Real Talk, girl. So y'all already know it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, but it's really actually Monday, the day after Mother's Day. So I hope y'all all see my post that I made on Friday. It was just a 30 second post on YouTube. It was shouting you all out because I wanted to be the first one to tell all y'all happy Mother's Day before anybody else. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be that one first, okay, to send y'all my love and blessings for Mother's Day weekend. So I hope y'all got a chance, an opportunity to see my post to y'all. If not, it's still there, but happy Mother's Day still. Every day is Mother's Day. Girl, you have your mother every day, okay? Well, I get one special day out of the year. Shoot, celebrate us every damn day, okay? Especially to those women who take care of their kids, you know, be there for their kids, you know, even gotta be your kids, it could be somebody else's kids. Happy Mother's Day every day to you guys. I hope y'all all had like an amazing Mother's Day, you know what I'm saying? Relax and chill. Girl, listen, for my Mother's Day, I really wanted to be left alone. You ever just want to be left alone you don't really want to do much like i just really didn't want to do anything if that makes sense you know because mother's day is the number one celebrated day of the year so everywhere you go you already know it's packed okay it's overly packed and then they overly price flowers and things of that okay but I normally just really like to relax on any day of the week if I can, especially on the weekends, like on a Sunday, you know what I'm saying? Because the next day you got to get ready. But I don't really require a lot. I don't really want, you know, too much attention focused on me for that day. Just because, you know what, let's just enjoy the day together as a family and just have a great time and, and just let me relax in my moo moo for the day all my PJs and just relax. So I did have one, my little two piece short set pajama set. And I did have plans on relaxing with very minimal activity. Okay. But it didn't really work out that way, which is all good. You know, I, I love to receive the love. Okay. From my loved ones. That is a plus. So what I wanted to do was just sit around and really do nothing. But, um, I ended up, um, I don't, I can't call it entertaining people, but you know, so my daughter-in-law, she came over and she brought me a gift and um, a card. The card was amazing. Like the card was just all more than enough. Okay. And just from what it said about me as a person and being there for her, I really took it to heart. Like it was like the most special card. So I was really, really like happy about that. And she also had um, someone at her job make me these roses, these silk roses. Aren't they pretty? They're just absolutely pretty. Um, you know, they're never died. They're silk roses and they were made looks like from ribbon. Now, very talented. You got to have talent to do stuff like this. Mumsy, you know, Mumsy is so creative. Now, Mumsy got me a gift and it's almost ready. It hasn't arrived yet because it's being made. So it's a custom gift. I already know what it is. It's a custom um, coloring book. And, you know, I love to color. So this person needs photographs of, you know, your family and they draw them into a digital coloring book where you can keep printing it off. So Mumsy has a coloring book made for me of all my children and grandchildren and my dog, which I'm so excited about. I'm like literally excited. I do believe she found her on Etsy. And when she told me how much she was spending on a gift, I definitely had to ask her what she was getting. And when she told me, I was like, you are not about to spend that much money on a coloring book. But she just insisted and insisted. And I said, you know what? I'm going to just leave you alone. I'm going to let you do you. And whatever you give me, I'm appreciative and grateful for it. So she also did make me something. And as we were grocery shopping on Saturday, she was saying how, you know, she told me that the Mother's Day gift that she had already planned for me wasn't finished yet, but she also made me something. And I said, oh yeah, was that what you was talking about on your phone call with Nay? Because I heard you telling her to get you something, but I don't know what you told her to get you. She was like, oh yeah, I'm making you something. So I was like, what is it? You know, I want to know. She was like, you'll just have to wait. And I was like, no, I want to know. I want to know. She's like, you can you can find out tomorrow. And I was like, well, then I don't want to speak to you. If you're not going to tell me now, I don't want to accept it. Of course, I was joking. But when she came in the room yesterday on Mother's Day, did she make me, okay, look, she got to have talent too. Did she make me a, wrote a, a bouquet of flowers out of um, pipe cleaners? Okay, I guess that's what you would call the pipe cleaners. Yes, this is so freaking cute. Like, I'm like, how the hell did you do that? How, how did you do that? And she said, it, it started getting frustrating because she was trying to follow a tutorial. And she said, you know what? I'm just making them my way. And she did that. And this was so cute. And then she also made me a special card. Okay. And what she wrote in it she says, just like these flowers, my love never dies for you. Happy Mother's Day. Love, Janaya. I was, she put love, Janaya, not Mumsy, but you know what I'm saying? I thought this was so cute. This was so freaking cute. Like, I love stuff when people make me stuff. You know, you never too old to make stuff. But I didn't know it was going to be this and i said i'm putting this in a glass vase because these are flowers too and here we go okay uh, my so stepson 
which is Wuzzle's um, brother from his father. He came over, him and his girlfriend came over, and his girlfriend was Wuzzle's best friend since childhood. So him and his girlfriend came over, because they, you know, they live about five minutes away from me. So they came over, they brought me some roses, which are downstairs, um, some Bath and Body Works, okay? Uh, lotion and body spray and bath bombs. And my daughter-in-law also did, I forgot to say, she got me the roses made, and she also got me a Dunkin' Donuts gift card, because she knows I have Dunkin' Donuts every day with my grandkids. So she got me a gift card and she got me some Lindor candy. So I'm trying to be eating healthy, but every time I try to eat healthy, somebody's always throwing something in my face that I have no business eating. Okay. But like I was saying, my stepson that he came over with his girlfriend and they brought me the roses in the Bath and Body Works and um some some smoke. Okay. You know, some um devil's lettuce like Nate, like Tati calls it. They gave me they got me a thing of devil's lettuce. Okay, <laughs> which I really appreciate that. And they also went to this Mexican Mexican restaurant, which is like two minutes away from us and we got some video tacos i love video tacos man i was dancing as i was eating video tacos i love good food mexican food be so effing good like when i tell you mexican food is good if you go to the right place Ooh, child, you will be in heaven. And girl, when I tell you I was in heaven eating those, I think today I'm going to have some for lunch, okay? But I had that. I was eating. We just chilling, talking, laughing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They had brought Tati some flowers, too. And my daughter-in-law also made that Tati some made. Also, her color is red. And um, I got my daughter-in-law some gifts. And then they came home, and she brought me um, a Bath & Body Works gift card, some Uhuhu markers off of Amazon, because you know I love to do markers and coloring. So I love good markers. Love good markers. So she got me some good markers, the Ohuhu brand. And she also gifted me um, two jars um, from Jars, um, Devil's Lettuce. Okay, so I got some Devil's Lettuce from her too, you know, from the dispense. Or listen, I don't turn down no Devil's Lettuce. If y'all know what I'm talking about, 420, okay? So she got me that too. So yeah, I had a great Mother's Day. You know, I just chilled. I stayed in my little two-piece pajama set and relaxed. I sat on the couch. I watched free TV, okay? When I say free TV, I mean Ruku. I love free TV. TV. I had to actually, you know what, guys, let me tell you something. There is nothing wrong with free. All right. When I say there's nothing wrong with free, there's definitely nothing wrong with free. Now, mind you, I don't have cable. I have internet, but I don't do the cable anymore. I've gotten rid of cable like maybe like seven, eight years ago. So I do streaming TV. I've had Netflix since they started. I've been a customer since Netflix started. I've been a customer since Hulu started. Okay. And um, Hulu, of course, they did streaming, but they really didn't have like a huge, you know, library. Over time, you know, they built it up. So for like the past two years, I've had Hulu live, like live TV. And I really barely watch so many channels that's on Hulu. So I got rid of that because I'm not going to pay $112 extra a month for Hulu live when I don't really watch it. Now, the cool thing about it is I'm able to share, you know, my account with my son and my daughter in so that way they don't have to purchase a streaming service. They don't have to spend extra money that they don't have. And you know, I have like, I also do Paramount TV, which I pay for, for one, one time pay for the entire year, 50 bucks. You can't beat that. You save money. When you do it like that, Zeus TV, I pay it for once a year, save money, you know, things like that. I do a Peacock. I have that, but I have the paid version, which is $5 a month. You get a little bit extra. So I watched free TV yesterday. I love to watch the Walking Dead channel on Roku TV. Um, of course you can watch on Netflix, but I mean, I like commercials sometimes. I don't know what, what I love commercials sometimes, you know, it's just me. And um, I sat and watched that and they have like a million channels on Roku TV. So if you check them out, even if you don't have a Roku TV or streaming device by them, you can still put the app on your actual other device. I like Roku. I like free shit. I, I love free shit. Okay. So that's what I did for Mother's Day and I relaxed, you know, and I ate and I had me some drinks, some margaritas, you know, my margarita drink from Sam's Club. I had that $8.48 for a margarita drink that will get you right. Girl, yes. That is what I did for Mother's Day. I really didn't do a lot. You know, I was just really basically trying to relax and preserve my energy for the rest of the week. But I hope you all had a great day for Mother's Day. So this morning, y'all, let me tell y'all. Okay, so y'all know I've been trying to be healthy and y'all know I like to go for walks in the morning. I don't really do the gym anymore. I don't do the gym at all. I've been canceling my membership and I went back to walking outside. That's what I like to do. You know what I'm saying? I like the scenery. I like the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? I like to look at nature. And even though it might be the same walk, a trail every day, I enjoy walking outside. I take my dog with me. I walk her. I bring her dog stroller because, you know, she's a little overweight. 
So in case she gets tired, I do have her dog stroller. And we have our water with us on our walks. So today I got a different cup. This is not a Stanley, honey. I don't do like the brands because they all work the same. But um, yes, um, my pink one is right here. My, my trusted pink one. But I'm going to be using this one because it's the one that Mumsy bought me for Christmas. Let me tell you, I make sure I go on a walk every day. It's to lose weight, but it's also to help strengthen my legs. So, you know, it's like a mile and a half. Okay, now, you know, it's about to get a thousand degrees out here. And I really thought that this morning was a nice cool breeze because I did feel a nice cool breeze as I was dropping off my grandsons to school. You know, I get out the car, I walk them like to the path and I watched them walk into the, the school grounds. And so as I'm standing there, I felt this nice cool breeze. Then I was like, oh yes, girl, I cannot wait to get home because I already had on my attire for walking. Get the, get my water jug, my water and get pancake ready. We're going to go for a walk. Girl, please tell me why I got halfway on the goddamn walk and turned around. I was like, oh no, I can't do this. It's burning up out here. I'm about to die. I said, God damn, you Y'all, when, when I tell you, I probably walked about 20 minutes and I turned, when I say I turned the hell around, I turned the fuck around. Okay. I, I still have more to go. And I was like, there's no way that I'm going to walk the rest of it. I can't do this. And it wasn't even halfway. I didn't even get halfway. I got a quarter of the way. And I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing no more. I turned, I, when I say I turned around, I turned the fuck around and was like, we going home, Pancake. Pancake was in the stroller already by then because she was panting. She was hot. You know what I'm saying? Her little paws on the concrete. So I was like, oh no, she's getting in the stroller. We're going home. When I tell you I got back home, when I tell you my face was the color of this goddamn cup or darker, my face was red, okay? It was red. And when my face gets that color, it takes some time for it to, to go back to its original color. Like when I tell you I was hot, I was hot, I was burning. I was like, there's no way. And when I came inside, I was like, you know what? I guess I'm going to just have to be fat for the fucking summer. I'm going to have to be fat for the summer because I'm not about to be walking outside no more at this early in the morning at eight o'clock and it's a hundred degrees already. This is, and it wasn't even a hundred degrees yet. It was like 90 something, but it wasn't even, it just felt like the sun was beaming. The beams felt just even hotter. Okay. And I did have on a short sleeve shirt, but I could feel the sun like beaming through that shit. Like it was like, I was ready to catch on fire and I had on my little old lady visor, you know what I'm saying? To protect myself. But girl, when I tell you that I felt the sun beating on my little thin hairline and my shoulders, I said, I I have to go home. I have to go home. I'm just going to have to be fat for the summer because there's no way I'm coming back outside until October. That's just what I had said to Pancake. When I said that to her, she looked at me and I looked at her and I was like, let's go get some cold water for you and let's go get your food ready. That's what it was. I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't do it. Now, Tati tells me I should do it at night, walk at night, but I'm kind of scary. And I'm not even that I'm scary. It has to do with the coyotes. Like, okay, yeah, call me scared of coyotes. I don't give a fuck if you feel like I'm a punk, but I really don't want to get mauled and ate the fuck up by any coyotes. And you start seeing them more now because they just keep building and building and building and building and building out here. So it's kind of like taking them out of their environment, which is pushing them more out to the suburbs, the city. And you're seeing them more. I've like seen all these reports on the neighborhood app or the next door app of people seeing coyotes running across their walls. Like, you know, the outside backyard walls or down the street or early in the morning. And listen, let me tell you something. Early in the morning and late at night, they coming out and I'm not trying to outrun them. Damn sure can't outrun them. And, you know, even though this is like a subdivision neighborhood, there still be weirdos. And I'm, I'm just not trying to take my chances. So I'm gonna just go back to finding some exercises to do in the house like I was doing. I want to really try out uh, chair Pilates, you know what I'm saying? Like they have chair Pilates and things like that exercise. So I'm gonna just try something out different. You know, I'm gonna try again tomorrow, but honey, if it's hot, bitch will be turning the fuck around. I'm sorry, but I can't do the heat. But um, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, yes, too damn hot. I'm gonna just have to be fat for the summer. It is what it is, okay? So today's video is being sponsored, okay? Okay, today's video is being sponsored by Hair Cares Shop. So this company is called Hair Care Shop. They have all type of hair care products that you can use cool uh, curling tools, you know what I'm saying? Like flat irons, wave crimpers, curling wand systems. So they did send me this curling wand system right here. This is the Pear Wand, Pear Wind Pro Beauty 71 Interchangeable Curling Irons. So the thing about this is these are cool. Like I've had one of these before, actually just got rid of it and didn't get rid of it on purpose. Like I didn't want to, but it finally gave out. I think I had that thing for like about 12 years and it was the best thing ever. It came with eight pieces of interchangeable wands and I absolutely loved it. Um, I've used it on all my videos. Now I've been stuck using another one, which was just 
It doesn't have anything interchangeable. It doesn't have any tip at the end to hold. So if you're grabbing a tip while you're curling, you're burning yourself. So when Hair Care Shop reached out to me, I was ecstatic. I was like, hell yeah, because I need a new one. My last one had a short in it. Like I said, it had I had about 12 years. It has served its purpose. So now I have a new one. And I'm really excited about this because I needed a new one. This one is packaging is a little bit less bulky, which is great. My other one was kind of a bulky packaging. You know what I mean? But y'all seen it. It had the little blue handle. I would always use it in my videos. But um, yes, it comes with this. So it's great for traveling. If you want to take this with you on vacations or you're like a traveling hairstylist, this is great because it has the pocket slots for you. It also does come with two hair clips. All right. And it also does come with a pair of gloves. Now, these I do find very, very like important, especially if you are new to using curly wands. Definitely you want to get these because when I first started out with these type, girl, I burned my wrist, my hand, all type of things. I don't use them anymore because I just find them to get in the way, but I absolutely love these entire systems. So we're going to, I'm going to give you a demo of it because I want to see, I did want to curl my ponytail. I do think the heat goes up to 450 degrees. I will definitely link everything down below for you guys for this system, but it does have this part, which is just the main, this is just like the main part. If you don't have this, honey, you ain't gonna get nowhere, okay? So the one thing that I do have that didn't come with the system is this little bracket. This is just to hold your hot curl on so it doesn't melt or burn any surfaces. So it comes with seven different um, tools. This is the smallest barrel. This one is a different, this is a different one. This is the one I'm gonna use. It has this odd shape. It's not round, it's like a cylinder shape, if you guys can see. It's a really odd shape, but they're really easy. So it comes with this one here, which we're going to use. Also this bubbly one, right here which gives you like you know like kind of like a spiral type of bubble curl this one here which is just like your standard size and we have another one which is a little bit smaller but i like these because at the end if you see right here this is what i'm talking about so when you're curling it you can hold on to the end your fingertips are not going to burn then we have like the really one big one which is a one and a half, one and a half inch curling barrel this one i think i use the most though i will be honest i use this size the most because i don't like my curls too tight last one is this one right here which you can get bigger curls at the top and smaller at the ends so I'm going to try it out. We're going to try out this cylinder shaped one because I just wanted to, you know, curl up my ponytail. I've, I've been needing to curl it for a minute, but it's really easy. You just pop it in there. You see there's brackets like so. You just ease it in. Mechanism right here where you're just going to make sure that you have it in all the way. And you're going to turn it. Let's see. Make sure it's locked or else it may fall out. And you just want to long press the temperature and heat it up. Okay. I can feel it heating up a little bit. It's, it's getting hot, y'all. So it does go up to 450 degrees like most of them. So I will link down below Hair Care Shop for you. This is the Power One Pro Beauty Curling Wand System. You can take this with you. It's a small gadget. You don't have to take them all. You can just take whichever barrel is your favorite and bring it with you. But also, while that heats up, I wanted to send a special shout out to everyone. Thank you so much for all the love and support on my video for Mumsy's Prom. You know, I love reading the comments for the prom video. Um, and I didn't really think that it was going to bring me in tears but reading all those comments from you guys and you guys just being able just being so relatable in my life with my family myself it just brought like so much joy to me you know what i'm saying well, like when i can read comments and i can read things like oh my god i remember when moms he used to bust in on the bathroom and when you lived in new york you used to do the videos so much relatable comments and it just brought so much joy to me and i was so happy and I, as i read them i was like crying and it wasn't like a sadness but it just was like of happiness of tears of joy it just of happiness and i just want to say thank you all for all the beautiful and lovely comments that you guys had to say about my family about my daughter about everything and i really appreciate you all and i'm grateful for you all i really honestly don't know what i would do without a lot of you guys because you guys are like my go-to system i can be a i'm able to talk with you guys i'm able to just be myself and so i thank you all for that and i just thank you so much for all the love on that video but also i want to say thank you for all the gifts that have been coming in for the baby shower, I want to thank you all so much for your donations for the baby shower. I will definitely link it down below. It's from Amazon. Um, so many amazing gifts, so many amazing people. And just thank you so much. And um, it just was so much love that I'm seeing. Like, you know how you just be like overwhelmed, but it's overwhelmed with a good thing. It's just like, I, I just, just feel real. I just really feel the love. So I want to thank you all for that. And that was like my main reason of wanting to be the first to say happy Mother's Day to people, because I just wanted to be the first because you guys have shown me so much love and i wanted to be able to show you guys so much love so i want to 
thank you all for the gifts for my grandson to be who's due in June, June 5th. That is right around the corner. And I'm going to link it down below. So for those of you who want to give to the baby shower, please do so. We appreciate everything that is given to us. We are very grateful. From the bottom of our heart, I want to say thank you to everyone. We're very, very grateful. With that being said, we are going to get into this real talk. Now, this thing is hot. I can smell it and I can feel the heat rising off of it. So I'm going to just give you guys a really quick demo, you know, of my little ponytail right here. Now, this ponytail is one of my favorites, so it better not burn none of it off, okay? Plus, I wanted to see what this 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 shape is all about, okay? Now, all I do is hold the ends. Now, like I said, you can use the glove if you want to, but I don't because it just makes gripping hard hair harder, okay? Now, the clips are good to use because you don't want the curls to fall. I needed some curl in my, my ponytail for a minute. But you know how you just get tired of doing the same thing? Like, I feel like, you know what? I've curled this damn thing on plenty of occasions. And then I wear it outside and, like, the curl will drop. Like, I need the curl to F and stay. Like, okay? Yeah, this thing gets hot, okay? Now, this is the last piece. Of so, meanwhile... <sighs> Let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like me to go ahead and talk about, you can send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the, the subject line real talk so that way I know it's a real talk video. You can also send me one email to April's Real Talk at gmail.com but also please put in the subject line real talk if you want me to change the names of the characters or the people that you are talking about in this video please let me know or you can do so as well and let me know but other than that we are going to get into this real Right, you guys so here we go now the clips are in and it's cooling off so we're gonna get right into this now i will tell you this for this particular one this end is hot as hell i don't think i will be holding it into this one because i can feel the heat very hot on the tip the ends of this is super duper hot so anyway let's get into this real talk you guys okay while my hair cools off my curls and we're gonna see how that do at the end okay this is an emergency now this is what it was titled she asked me if i could do this in advance prior to everyone else because she claimed it was an emergency. This is an emergency. Hi, April. I am sorry for addressing this as an emergency, but I really needed your input on the situation. And also, I know how you feel about your own beloved fur baby, Pancake. So I really wanted to know your input. So I have had my fur baby for a little over a year, basically almost two years now, whom I adopted him from the local shelter. And he and I are like two peas in a pod. He is about four years old. Not really sure, but that is what I estimate from the time and years which was told to me by the shelter. So I hooked up with this guy who I've been with for now seven months. He comes over to my home and stays a couple nights out of the week at my house. Me and dude are exclusive and we seem to get along just perfect. However, there is a huge issue to me which I need to address. So like I stated, I have had my fur baby Rex for almost two years. He is a little chihuahua. Rex is very territorial, but he's still a pleasant dog. My dude doesn't seem to get along well with Rex, always complaining about Rex growling at him or barking at him. And when he stays over, Rex will basically put himself in between us on the couch and sometimes in the bed. My dude is trying to push the agenda of moving in with me, but says he will not move in with me until one, I get rid of Rex because he doesn't feel he's a good protection dog. Two, he feels like him and Rex do not get along well. Three, no man should have a dog that is so small. He has tried to give me the option of choosing over him and my dog, basically saying he will not move in with me if I do not get rid of Rex. I love my dog and I do love and care for dude as well. And it's such a hard choice deciding on the two of them. Like I want to be in a relationship, get married, have children and live happily ever after. But at the same time, I'm like, why am I choosing or why should I choose between the two? 
This was the first animal I have ever adopted. And yeah, he may be small, but he guards me just well. And I honestly do not know what to do in this situation. I would love to have Dude live with me in which it would give me company and companionship. But I don't know. Is he trying to use me to get out of his current living situation, which is at his mother's house? By the way, we are both in our 20s. I don't have any children. He has two kids with this chick who he says is a gold digger. But I don't know if that is the case because I've never seen her or his kids yet. I've seen pictures of his kids, but I've never met them. April, I don't know what to do. Can you please give me your opinion? Thank you and happy Mother's Day in advance, LaShelle. First of all, let me just take a sip of water because y'all, some of y'all be emailing me the dumbest shit like y'all already know the fucking answers to, but I'm going to take a sip real quick because my mouth dry. Mm -hmm. Why do y'all be emailing me shit that y'all already have the fucking answers to? Like, I'm really trying to figure this the fuck out. Why do y'all be emailing me shit y'all already got the goddamn answers to Lachelle you got a dog that you adopted almost two years ago Rex and you love him so much this dog y'all are like two peas in a pot then you got dude who we don't even know his name we just gonna call him dude you got some dude that you met seven months ago and he stays over your house random nights out of the week because he don't want to be at his mother house being controlled and told what the fuck to do so now he's trying to give you an ultimatum you either leave the dog or leave him girl listen the fucking man would be gone okay there's no way that i will allow anybody i don't give a damn who you are come in between me and my fur baby no fucking way okay i wish a motherfucker would tell me it's either him or the dog because you would be leaving out real quick okay you listen the first time i even sense you thinking some shit like that you're a ghost you're gone you're goodbye bye see ya there's no way that i will allow anybody to give me an ultimatum and choose over them okay now I could see if you had friends that were toxic and bad and was doing nothing but leading you in the wrong path. But nah, we're not about to choose over no animals, okay? For one, you adopted the animal from the shelter. Same thing that I've done for Pancake. I adopted her from the shelter, okay? In 2018, all right? After my last dog passed away, okay? And me and Pancake are definitely two peas in a pod. That's my daughter, I'm her mother. She is my fur baby, okay? I don't go anywhere without her. Unless I can't bring her, then she stays with Tati. But if I can bring her, she comes along. And I'll be damned if I'm going to allow anybody, I don't give a damn who you are, to make me decide to choose between the two, my dog or you. Listen, now you've got some type of knowledge because you just said you don't know if he's trying to use you to get out of his current living situation, which is living with his mother. Okay, first of all, he lived with his mama. Y'all both in y'all 20s, that's fine. Y'all can still live with your mothers at home, but you are out on your own. And here he is, he's coming out of his mother's house. So now he's trying to demand you to get rid of your dog in order for him to stay with you. Girl, let him stay at his fucking mother's house and continue to pay that child support if he is paying anything and, and, and take care of his fucking kids. Now you got him talking about his baby mama is a gold digger. Listen, let me tell you something. Good, I'm glad you don't know. Good, I'm glad you may not believe him. Don't fall for the trickery. Don't fall for the foolishness. Don't fall for the fucking nar narcissistic ways. Don't fall for the foolishness, okay? What he tells you about his baby mother may not be so, okay? There's two sides, sometimes three and four to every fucking story, okay? Mm-hmm. And let's not go along with him just because his, what he says about his baby mama is a gold digger, maybe not. That might be saying that he's broke, okay? All right? She might be asking for $20 and he feels like she's a gold digger. When a dude tells you that their baby mama is um, a gold digger, that means basically that his ass is broke and he can't afford to take care of nothing nor his fucking kids. Doesn't mean she's a gold digger. Means his fucking ass is broke and he lives with his mama and he's trying to move in with you and demand you to get rid of Rex. There's no fucking way, okay? If you get rid of Rex, girl, don't you ever watch my channel and my videos again and I mean this wholeheartedly. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm like the hugest advocate for animals. Like I do not like people doing mean things, cruel things to animals. Some people don't realize, but just because they're a dog doesn't just give you the right to disrespect them or to mistreat them or to get rid of them because you feel like you can, okay? They are a living being. Dogs, cats, any type of animal is a living being, okay? I cannot stand to see people breeding them like puppy mills. I cannot stand to see people using them, mistreating them. I cannot stand to see people buy pets, buy dogs, and just do nothing but leave them outside chained up. So you bought the dog so he could live in your backyard. What fucking sense does that mean? Like, really, literally. Hmm? People mistreat animals on a daily basis and it's sad and it's pathetic. And these type of people really need to be dealt with by the law. I'm glad that there are a lot of states that have strict laws about animal cruelty because to me, 
animals get mistreated all the time and it's because they cannot speak for themselves let me tell you something a dog gives so much unconditional love they never judge you pancake and me are like this okay we when i tell you we like this we like this and if i ever do meet someone and they don't like her then i guess you just don't like me either and if she don't like them then i guess you got to go and because that's how i feel about her i've adopted her from the shelter in 2018 okay and she actually came from mexico i have her paperwork she actually came from mexico so halo is the name of the dog adoption agency that i got pancake from along with that i also got my other dog from there years and years before pancake who was old she was a senior dog okay so i was able to give her three four years of her senior life before she passed but halo is the animal shelter where i purchased pancake from and she did come from mexico all right they do go over to other countries and rescue animals i just feel like this give a dog a home don't give the dog back because your man your so-called seven month relationship deems feels it's necessary for you to get rid of the dog let me tell you something if the dog is growling at him and if the dog is barking at him that means that there's something up with him that the dog knows and you don't okay dogs and babies have really good sense and judge of character of people and we really don't as an adult so if your dog rex is continuously barking at dude and growling maybe rex is trying to tell you something if rex is coming in between you maybe rex is trying to tell you something i just feel like why the fuck would you ask me out of all people what would I do in a situation if it came to my dog? Bitch, get rid of him. Not the dog. Get rid of dude. First of all, he lives with his mother. Nothing wrong with living with your mama. Because my, my kids, you know, my daughters live with me. There's nothing wrong with that. But dude is coming from his mother's house trying to tell you what the fuck to do with your pet that you got living with your fur baby. Because I hate to call them pets. With your fur baby living in your house. So he's trying to tell you what to do. Girl, dude would have the door slammed behind him so effing quick that he wouldn't know what hit him. You know that old saying, don't let the door hit you with the good, with the good Lord split you. Okay, well, let me tell you what. The door would be hitting you on the way out where the good Lord split you. Okay, fuck it with me. It would. The door would. Because I would dare you. There's no way. Let me tell you something, ladies. Let me tell y'all. Some of y'all be on some bullshit. Like, straight up. I'm going to just keep it real with y'all. Some of y'all be on some real dumb shit. Some real bullshit. Because y'all will let a man that y'all just fucking met interfere with y'all life and try to tell you what the fuck to do. Like, it's one thing when someone is trying to help you and tell you what to do. But when motherfuckers come into your life that are brand new and they try to demand and give you options or ultimatums what's going on in your home that they don't fucking live at and they don't pay bills with and you go along with it, then you're dumb as fuck. Okay? And I mean that wholeheartedly like what i mean is this you've been with dude for seven months that ain't no fucking relationship seven months is not a relationship i don't give a damn who you are and you feel like you in a long committed exclusive relationship it's just seven months bitch that's a little bit over half of a fucking year which ain't really much okay half of the year ain't long at all so shit it's motherfucking about to be june so y'all probably what got together in like november or whatever listen he lived with his mama he's a mama's boy let his ass stay the fuck over there there's no way i'm allowing anybody i don't care who you are come into my home where i pay bills at okay and try to tell me what what to do with my fur baby or anything else going on in my home he's talking about him and the dog don't get along first of all if someone can tell you that they don't get along with your dog that seems real petty and it seems like a you fucking problem seems like the dog know more about him than you do michelle okay this time if he giving you ultimatums listen you don't need no ultimatums because i wish a motherfucker would give me an ultimate you you're never gonna have the opportunity to give me an ultimatum because goodbye good fucking bye see ya no way <laughs> No way. Did you hear that, Panny? You want to take loved Rex. Look at this, okay? This is my baby right here, right? Yo, everybody, he's my baby. You want to take loved Rex out of his home. She even Pancake got something to say about it, right? Yes, I know. You want to take loved Rex. Want to say hello? You want to take loved Rex out of his home because some dude is telling you you got to choose? So you, you, you really want to take your dog that you have grown accustomed to, that you have grown to love, and you've grown to trust, along with Rex has grown to trust you. Because let's remember, let's not forget, these dogs come from an environment where a lot of them are afraid. Some of them are taken off the street. Some are removed from bad situations. And then once they're put in this environment and they're caged for a certain amount of time, they do become very, very scared. A lot of them have aggression issues. A lot of them have anxiety issues. And a lot of these dogs, it takes some time for them to warm up to their new human. Human, okay so you are gonna ask me about what would i do <laughs> there is nothing to do the dude would been gone 
The first time my dog growled with him and the first time I seen that you wasn't getting along with my dog and you wasn't being respectful to my dog, oh, you're gone. You you get the ghost. You get the you get the goodbyes. You get the door hit you on the way out. You get the fuck yous and you get everything else. And I ghost you. There's no way I'm choosing a man over my animal. I, I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. Never. Now, it's a difference if we're married and the dog started becoming aggressive to everybody in the household like biting then that's a different situation but not because of what he's telling you and also what i really didn't like sweetheart did he say to you do said what grown man has a small dog first of all it's not even his dog okay now you can rebuttal that with what grown man lives with his mama that's what you can say what grown man lives with his mama what grown man is trying to move in with his girlfriend and probably not pay a motherfucking thing because you didn't say he had a job or he didn't have a job he lives with his mama he's talking about his baby mom as a gold digger you never seen his kids like you know, his ass probably broke because why does he want to live with you okay come over and visit and take your ass home back to your mother house that's great but he did say the dog don't don't get along with him the dog be barking at him the dog be growling at him there's a reason for it lachelle there's a reason for everything there is a reason okay there's a reason my, my advice to you is this. Get rid of dude. Let him reside where he's been at. You already think that he's probably using you to get out of your living, his living situation. So if you're feeling these ways, why fucking write me? Why email me? No disrespect to you at all. But why write me? Why write me, April, who loves their dog so much? Like, I, there's no way. I would never get rid of my dog for anyone, okay? And that's just what it is. And this guy seems like a very selfish person, but he also seems like he is a red flag. Sweetheart, you got you one right there that you don't supposed to have in your life. Get rid of him, okay? Especially because you had to choose. Girl, get rid of him. There's no way I'm allowing anybody to choose um, or allowing to make me choose between my loved living dog and a relationship with them like everybody wants companionship i get that you want to be married you want to have companionship but sweetheart he's not the one to marry you he's not the one that you should be having companionship because he's only been in your life seven months and he's already trying to dictate what's going on in your household coming from his mother's household so he is not the marrying material he is not the one you want to spend your life with or have children with or have companionship with if he cannot find it in himself and in his heart to get along with a small dog then he is not worthy of being in a relationship with you he is not worried. He is not worthy of being in your presence, let alone Rex's presence. He is not worthy enough, okay, to even text message you. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. And get rid of him. And on that note, ladies, divas, and divas, let Lachelle know in the comments what you would do in the situation if you had to choose between your fur baby and a relationship. Like, what would you do? Now we're gonna get on to the next real talk, and it just seems like nobody is happy in their relationships or they having issues. And sometimes y'all women really need to take heed into certain elements, like not every relationship is worthy of being in just because you want companionship and company doesn't mean that you need to be in that particular relationship if it's toxic and it's not working out stop trying so hard and just let it go because sometimes you be blocking your blessings and you don't even know take it from me i've been in this situation you know what i'm saying like i said i've been married i've been with that person for 23 years and i got divorced the situation, I tried to make it better each and every time I tried to work it out with him while he was being an alcoholic and we was living in New York. I tried to work, work it out with him because I, I I don't like giving up on people and that's just my thing. But sometimes you really do need to put your foot down and say, fucking no, enough is enough. You know what I'm saying? And I did say that. I did do that. And then once again, I tried again with him after the divorce. But you know what? Some things are just left best alone and walk away from it some people i just see like they find it hard to do that in a relationship who don't want companionship who don't want to be loved i don't know anybody that don't want to be loved i can't speak for the entire world but i'm pretty sure that everybody in this fucking universe wants to be loved but it's who you're loving and who you're allowing to love on you that's the thing so let's go on to the next rules Okay, you guys. So this one right here is titled also lose weight or we are through. So this is this is what I'm talking about. And I've already read these. So, you know, beforehand, but this is why I gave you the message of sometimes we just have to learn to walk away. Hey, D hey, April and divas. You can call me Martha for this email. April, let me just start off by saying I'm an older woman in her late 40s and I've stepped out into the dating scene. I've been single for some years, but have been dating this man you can call Henry now for a few years. I say dating because he ain't put a ring on it, nor has he hinted to putting a ring on it. We have been dating for three and a half years now. 
April, you know I am not getting any younger, and when I say I enjoy his company, I do. We go out to dinner and such, and we also have gone on several trips traveling together. We've been to Egypt and London, and we are wanting to visit the Dominican Republic, but I don't know if that trip is going to take place. I say that because I don't know if he is the one for me. Henry is always speaking on my weight. I weigh 265 pounds, and I stand at 5'7". I am not a big woman, and I'm not a small woman. I feel I'm great for my size. Henry says little things to me about what smaller women can do in my age and has remarks such as if you would lose a little weight you would be able to do certain things and move a little better he also says things like if you were to lose a little weight then you would look great in a wedding dress as if that is his way of telling me he would ask me to marry him i know that you have said many times in the past that people need to accept you for the person you are and i truly do feel this way but i also feel like at a time in our lives we should compromise in order to get where we want in life I like Henry. We've been together for a few years now, and I like him, but I love myself, and I'm trying to figure out if Henry is the right one for me, and would you lose weight because of a man? Thank you, Martha. So Martha is in her 40s, her late 40s, right? In her late 40s. And she finally done stepped out on the dating scene. So she's been in the dating scene for three and a half years now. So, okay. You know what's kind of weird to me in this email? You say you're dating him, but y'all been together for three and a half years. And she also says she likes him. She said it twice at the end. She said, I know that you said many times in the past that people need to accept you for the person you are. And I truly do feel this way. But I also feel like in a time of our lives, we should compromise in order to get where we want in life. I like Henry. We have been together for a few years now and I like him, but I love myself. So she said she liked him twice, but she also said, but I love myself. So she's been with this man. Martha's been with this man for a little bit over three years. She did not say she loved him at all, but she likes him. So that right there goes to show like, okay, Martha, are you really, really feeling Henry? Because yeah, y'all went traveling. Yeah, y'all went out to eat, but you're not saying you love him. Okay. You're saying you like him. And yes, in life, we do need to compromise at times to get where we want or to get what we need and want. But I'm not sure if I'm compromising with you on losing weight so that you can propose to me. There's not, that's not going to happen. Okay. No way. Because if you got with me at the size I am and you like me and you feeling me, then why are you trying to change me as a person? Like I know good weight is good health. Okay. Trust me. I know this, but when a person can tell you, you look, you'd look great in a wedding dress if you lost weight, I probably would return and reply with, and you know what? They made wedding dresses in all fucking sizes. So what are you really trying to say? Because if you're trying to say that to me, I will marry you. I would not. Okay. That's just like an insult. You want to, you want to compromise with your feelings. You want to compromise with your self-respect. You want to compromise in order to get married with the person. Listen, there is compromising. In a couple's relationship, we do compromise. It's agree to disagree. But you didn't even state that you you love him. You said you like Henry. You like him, okay? And I feel like you like him because you don't want to be alone. You want some companionship. You want some company. Like you said, you love the company and the companionship. But you don't like the fact that he's talking about your weight. Have you ever spoken up for yourself and said anything to him about his comments on your weight? Because, honey, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be sitting there allowing no man to be talking about my size and what I would look good in if I lost some fucking weight. That's an insult. It's disrespectful. And I don't really care how nice you fucking say it or put it. It's disrespectful. And I wouldn't give a damn if I lost 20 pounds. I still wouldn't get in the dress and marry you. That's what my fucking reaction would be. It's the email before this one and then it's this one. Y'all keep compromising for what? Y'all ain't really compromising. You want to give up your dog? That's not a compromise, honey. That's weakness. You want to compromise and lose weight so that you can get in a wedding dress? Nah, honey, that's being desperate, okay? You can just walk away and you can go on many more dates and find you someone that is perfect for you. Just like Lachelle, she'll find someone perfect for her that loves dogs, maybe even has a dog of their own and wants to come in and bring along an extra dog and they have a better relationship. Let me tell y'all something. I don't fuck with people that don't like the certain things that I like, okay? If you don't like dogs, then I don't really know what to tell you. I'm not fucking with you. If you don't like a little bit of extra your weight on a person that I don't know what to tell you. I'm not fucking with you. But everybody come in every different size and that's why they make sizes, okay? We don't just have one standard size. It ain't really one size fits all. It's fucking not. Okay? That's why they make different sizes for us women and men, okay? You can find someone that's perfect for you. You don't have to settle, okay? Martha, you don't have to settle for a man just because you feel like you're in your late 40s. People get married in their late 60s and find companionship. So age really doesn't have to do much with love. A number really doesn't have to do much with love. If the person 
person really isn't into you, then these snide comments and remarks and ultimatums and options would never even come into play. That person will love you for the person you are, for the weight you have, for the animal that you have, etc. The fuck, etc. Okay. The moment that I hear someone talk about weight in a relationship, I just, you know what? I don't care what size you are, but Martha is not really realizing how Henry is insulting her. And maybe she is. And maybe that's why she's saying she likes him. Because when you tell a woman that you've been dating for three and a half years, that maybe if you lose some weight, you'd be able to do a little bit more. Smaller girls, smaller women are able to move more. Listen, I, I've never heard the saying, smaller women are able to move more. Because I see some women that are bigger than me and they be moving better than my ass, okay? Let's just be for real out there. Doesn't really do have to do a lot of times with your size. Yeah. Being at a certain weight is great for your health, okay? It is. But she weighs 265 pounds and she's 5'7". I weigh 250 pounds. I'm like five three and a half, okay? And I weigh 250 pounds. I lost a couple pounds, okay? And I don't think I'm that big. Now, she's taller than me and she weighs a couple more pounds. And I'm pretty sure she's proportioned the same, but just taller, okay? Just depends. So she's not like my 600-pound wife, which he's making it seem like she's big. How big is fucking Henry, okay? Shit, somebody need a little cushion for the fucking pushing. Listen, ladies. Ladies, let me let me just say this and I'm going to leave it at that. It's a compromise in any type of situation. It could be a love relationship. It could be a friendship. It could be a family ship. It's compromise at work. It's a compromise. You go to the grocery store and they don't have that particular bread. You compromise them for the next bread. OK, yes, it's a compromise. However, do not compromise your fucking dignity. Do not compromise your pride. Do not compromise your self-respect for yourself just to make somebody else happy. OK, because while that person is becoming happy, you over here sitting being fucking miserable and this goes for the both of you Lachelle and Martha you don't compromise your dignity and your self respect to make somebody else fucking happy that's not what we do while you over here making this person happy Martha Lachelle then you over here sitting miserable because you done got rid of your dog and you done lost weight and you're allowing this motherfucker to keep talking to you about being smaller and being smaller and being smaller there is a rule and the rule is to learn how to tell people no and to go ahead about their business there's nothing wrong with ghosting somebody. There's nothing wrong with breaking up with someone. There's nothing wrong with getting rid of someone because they are not bringing you pure happiness in your life. And when I say pure happiness, 100% is great, but pure is pure and it is what it is. If a person is bringing you nothing but pure happiness, pure bliss, then that's what you need in your life. But for those that are bringing you toxic toxicity are bringing you nothing but n nonsense it's time to let it go we are not getting any younger as a person i don't give a fuck if you in your 20s your 30s your 40s your 50s we don't go backwards we go forward our our age goes forward okay and i'll be damned if i'm going to allow anybody i mean any fucking body make me miserable in the rest of my years of my life being with them. There's nothing wrong with getting rid of a toxic relationship. You be blocking your blessings and this is what you both ladies need to realize. Henry and dude are blocking your blessings, okay? When you're with somebody, of course you're not looking for someone else, you're not. Sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. But you don't realize once you get rid of that person, yeah, you've been dating him for three and a half years. Yeah, you might feel some type of way when you break up with him. You might not feel too much of a certain type of way because you never said you loved him. You said you liked him. And there's nothing wrong with liking a person for three years and not loving him. He probably hasn't done enough for you to love him. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying because some people will love a person after a few months and it depends on the person you're with that they make themselves lovable. But Henry doesn't seem like he's lovable because you said twice that you like him, but you love yourself. And it is a good thing to love yourself because when you learn to love yourself and you love on yourself then you can see better you can see better quality people better quality items better quality life when you love on yourself you realize you're not taking so much for granted you realize you're not allowing people to walk all over you're realizing you're not allowing people to treat you any type of way and you also can realize a red flag and see a red flag without having to go through the nonsense with that person so ladies take heed to self-love take heed to toxic relationships and learn how to just get rid of somebody if they're not bringing you your happiness and bliss you can do it i've done it we can do it don't allow anybody to give you an ultimatum and an option i i just wouldn't i would never allow anyone to give me an ultimatum and, and then it might depend on the ultimate but it has a lot to do with the situation at hand martha you're in your late 40s you're never too old to find love and companionship don't block your blessings you might find mr right when you get rid of mr wrong and the same thing goes to you lachelle don't block your blessings by being with dude and getting rid of rex 
Rex is your blessing. You know how much love that an animal can bring to your life. I'm single and have been single for almost four years. And when I tell you I'm so happy and I'm blessed, it allowed me to grow as a person. It allowed me to see my worth better. It also allowed me to just chill and relax and level my family and get to know who I am all over again. And there's nothing wrong with that. And also sometimes we go through things in our life that we don't need to be in a relationship. We just need to chill. And I feel that way about myself. Losing my son was a lot for me. And I just really don't feel like I have it here to give to anybody else. And that's fine if I feel that way. Whenever I get around to finding a relationship or getting one, that's fine. If I never do, that's fine too. But I tell you what, I'm so happy with my life. And I may not have the companionship of the opposite sex, the ma a man, but I have the companionship of my family and my fur baby. And I love my life. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy who I am and I enjoy my life on a daily basis. And I don't allow anybody negative and toxic to come into my life. That's just too much drama. And life is way too short for drama and negativity. Straight facts. Okay? Straight facts. So ladies, Lachelle and Martha, please get rid of the toxic men in your life and move forward. That's all you got to do. You know what I'm saying? That's all you got to do. Leave Michelle and Martha your opinions, lady, in the box, in the comments. I just, you know what? I don't really like to get in people's relationship, I, but I'm just telling you guys something for your own good because let me tell you, I've been through that. I've been through enough in my life and I'm not proud of the things I've been through, some things I am proud of, but I am proud of me being able to learn to love myself again and to be able to move forward. That what That's what I am. You know what I'm saying? I am very proud of that. And I just realized, like, some women, they just need to be in relationships. Like, they'll leave one and they'll get out of one. And that's fine. That's your business. I'm not here to judge you. But sometimes we do need to learn how to self-love. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, with that being said, the curls, here they go. All right? This is what I be talking about. It has nothing to do with the wand. It has to do with this hair. I don't know why it doesn't hold the curl. You know, I put flexi rods in it. I left the clips in it for long. And I mean, it, it did curl it nice. So, it did. It did. It does have a little curl in it. But I guarantee you, by the end of today, these curls will have dropped out you know what i mean but it does curl nice it curls quick just make sure that you put some clips i will leave the information down below for this curling wand power and pro power and pro beauty i will leave the information down below for haircareshop.com check them out they have loads of different things all kind of products curling irons hot air brushes hair styling sets hair straighteners hair dryers they have it all now i don't really know about they, they don't sell hair okay but they have all kind of hair drying systems which is really great. I will link everything down below for Hair Care Shop. And I hope you guys have an amazing blessed day. Thank you all for the love on Mother's Day. Also for my daughter's video for her prom. And also for all of the Amazon Baby Registry gifts. I thank you all for that. I will link Amazon and Hair Care Shop down below. Please, if you haven't donated to the Baby Registry, please, if you can do so, I would greatly appreciate it. We all would. And on that note, I love you all. And I will see y'all in the next video. Have an amazing, blessed day.